so what's cool about a cage is that these are the two same tubes that we use to mark up our main hoop and these also usually work pretty well for the A pillar as well. This one is a 35 degree bend and this one's a 60. So what I do is I kind of take this 35 degree bend and I'll kind of just place it up in the corner kind of about where the bend's going to be. So you can see I try to keep this tube up as far away as you possibly can, as far away from your head as possible for safety of course. So kind of see where it ends up lining up and then I just mark the chassis where that mandrel mark is going to be. Usually the 60 fits pretty good down here. You're going to hold it up kind of like that. This one looks like the angle is a little bit too much and this is where my plate's going to be right there for my where my APO is going to land. I already got the plate cut out and I got it tacked in there. Grab a tape measure, just do an overall measurement from the floor all the way up to where the main hoop is going to be and then you go ahead and cut your tube. And I'll usually start with the, the top bend first, that's a 30 degree bend. So I'll just go ahead and bend that in whatever orientation the tube lands in the die. Then comes the fun part. Then you have to figure out how to offset your two tubes. Uh, and that's where it can get a little bit tricky, but I've kind of simplified it in a way that's fairly easy. So you kind of hold both of your tubes up here at once, right on your marks. And then you pretty much just draw a straight line down these tubes. And I ended up using this longer one right here from another build. So if you can see, you kind of just have to eyeball and it helps to have another set of hands, but you just kind of try and line an imaginary lineup with these tubes as best you can. So you see that line is pointing right at that one pretty well, pretty decent. Then I'll just take these out and I'll set them on the ground and usually those lines never line up because you will have some sort of offset in these tubes. These are the two marks that looked lined up when we were inside of the car. So if I set these right up next to each other, I can take a tape measure and I can measure the distance between those two and it turned out to be 5 16ths of an inch. So I know that after I bend my first bend, the center line of the next bend has to be 5 16ths rotated off from the center line of the first bend. So my overall measurement of this A pillar ended up being right about 7 feet, which is pretty long but you always like to have a little bit of fudge either way in case you make a mistake. So. Uh, I measured in from, I gave myself a couple inches on where the main hoop was going to be and then I measured to my mandrel mark inside of the chassis from that main hoop. Uh, gave myself a couple inches and bent the first 35 degree bend. So now I go back inside of the car and then I measure the distance between my two mandrel marks that are marked on the chassis. Sort of like what we did on the main hoop. So I can take that measurement and then you can just figure out exactly how far apart your bends have to be. Which in my case looks like about 27 and a half. So this tube ultimately is going to end up living in the car like this. So this is the side that's actually up against the, the body. So that's going to give you your, your best accurate representation of your measurement because ideally I'm going to have this tube basically pressing up against my marks that are on the chassis. So that's why I take the tube and I always draw it on this side because this will be up against the chassis. So we have the distance between our two bends. So I'm going to stand this tube up and I'm gonna hold this tube up and that's gonna show us exactly where that bend is going. Dead straight with that and I'm gonna mark the tube. And that's gonna give us our reference point for our offset. I'm just matching right down the inside of that bend, dead straight. So now since this A pillar is gonna live inside of the car, usually when it sits up in the car, this bend has to go that way to follow your A pillar. Which means that this bend is gonna to have to move to this side you don't want to make two passenger side A pillars, you'd be really bummed because essentially this one is a mirror of that one. So then we take that 5 16ths of an inch and I'm going to extend this measurement pretty far down. It's going to make it nice and easy to see once I put it in the bender. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I, I made a, a fairly good educated guess on the offset of those tubes. It's not exactly perfect like I like it. Like I like that A pillar to be touching pretty much the whole way because I like to be able to stitch weld the tube to the chassis. And it's pretty much impossible to nail that on the first try. So what I do is I've made this sweet little contraption here where I bolted this, this tube off the side of our lift. Super strong anchor points to the ground and basically I'm going to use this as a way to kind of tweak this tube just a little bit. And you can see that once I lean on this, it kind of binds the tube up a little bit. So I'm just going to push on this just a little bit, not a whole lot. I'm going to push on this just a little bit. That's going to give that tube just a tiny little bit, a little bit more offset. 
and doing that I can get this tube to fit absolutely perfect inside of the car as well as adding one or two more little bends in that tube. Already it looks a lot better just with that one little bounce on it. I could probably go a little bit more. I'd like to close that gap up a little bit since the top of this tube is just resting flat up against the chassis. If I can give this just a little bit more twist, I can get that to touch the chassis right there and then I can know exactly what angle to bend my third bend right in here because I'm going to try and push that tube up that way so I can get this entire thing to touch that A pillar up until this point. This tube doesn't create any sort of blind spot. So when you're like sitting in the car like this and you look over because we're driving sideways all the time, right? This tube is directly in line with my eyesight. It's behind the A-pillar. So it doesn't make, the, it's not sticking way out here. So it doesn't make my A-pillar or my blind spot any bigger. That's really important to me because I really like to be able to see as much as possible while drifting, believe it or not. So you kind of got to have something to set your A-pillars on. Actually, per the rules, you have to. It has to be a certain size. Um, and this is just going to be like a support piece that basically just goes down and really ties it into the chassis and in case that a pillar takes a really really big load upside down if the car goes um, it will be able to spread the load out through the chassis and not to uh, you know ideally make it just punch through the floor so gotta make it strong lot done on the cage uh, feeling pretty good about it and a couple more tubes that I want to add before we go and jam this thing on the track on Friday uh, I really want to do the diagonal bar that goes from the corner of the passenger side corner of the main hoop to the driver's side for the protection and then the harness bar but before I do that I wanted to spend a little time in the back of this thing trying to clean up the sound deadening a little bit um, so this area I just did and this I still have yet to do and all I do is I take an old used paintbrush and then I just dip it in a cup of gasoline just regular pump gas and I'm able to spread it around and you can take off of this layer that's left after the sound deadening comes off now, believe it or not up here looks entirely like all this down here super gross super nasty spread that gas around there a little bit and wipe, wipe it up with a rag and uh, I mean it looks pretty dang good so hopefully we can get that same result on the rest of the car I got a lot to do but I wanted to get this done before I went ahead and added those extra tubes and make my life a little easier so on to paint gassing I mean that already looks quite a bit better right I'm stoked on that So this is the diagonal bar that goes in the main hoop. So what it does is it goes, the whole main hoop structure that sits behind your head, they want a diagonal support that goes from the passenger side to up above the driver's side. So it's gonna sit right behind my head like that. And then right in the middle here somewhere, connecting again from the main hoop diagonal bar then to the main hoop again is gonna be your harness bar. And that's what's gonna go, is exactly what it sounds like. It's gonna go over your shoulders, through your seat, and connect to that harness bar for any front impacts. So uh, we're getting close now. No more back seat. I like to preheat the tube just because it's a little bit cold out right now. And even when you like lay your hand on the tube, it's really, really cold. So you have to think about a weld is essentially trying to melt the metal. So until you get heat into your tube, the weld's not really gonna be penetrating. So that means that the first little bit of your weld isn't gonna penetrate very well, which is not good. So I just give it a good preheat at first, uh, and that way that I know for a fact that the weld is nice and penetrated all the way through from the start to the very end. Seat's going in, got to measure for that uh, harness bar. Oh yeah. So we have been spending a good amount of time on the E36 lately. We've been jamming on this cage and this thing. And uh, I really, I really, really just want to go drive it. And a lot of the tracks that we have around here in SoCal, um, we're not running competitions there. So most of them don't really care if you have door bars or not. 
So I figured now's the perfect time to go out and drive this thing. So I spent a little bit of time rigging the seats back up in it. I put one of my spare Recaro seats in the driver's seat because that's my favorite seat of all time. Got some harnesses, some Simpson harnesses rigged up in this thing. Obviously safety first. I'm not even gonna bother throwing the dash back in it. Um, I just zip tied the cluster back in there because I wanted to be able to have the engine temp and tack and stuff like that. Um, so really just zip tied that back in there, but I'm actually kind of digging it without the dash. Um, the biggest thing that bugs me about underneath the dash area is all those nasty looking wires, all that factory bull crap wiring that's in there. So I think we're gonna have to do something about that. So I hit up my buddy Brian from Heartstock Racing. He's the one who did the wiring harness in my E46, my competition car. So uh, I think that this one's gonna get a similar treatment, definitely not to the motorsports level like the comp car, but um, we'll definitely be keeping it much more clean in there, much more simple. And really, since this one doesn't have a rear mount rad, uh, all the crazy stuff in the rear, it basically needs wires to the fuel pump and wires to the taillights. So that's really not a whole lot of wires running through this car. So definitely gonna simplify it, but overall, I'm incredibly stoked to go and drive this thing and uh, let's have a good day at the track. on the most just presence on the inside of the car i mean seriously like dashboards and all that so overrated so overrated dude look at this